Welcome to lesson number seven. We're going to talk about the part two of the inverse of a relation. All right, so we we talked about three different methods for determining the, the inverse of a function, and one of those was to reverse the coordinates in the set of ordered pairs. So if you have an x and y value, then you'll reverse those so the the x value becomes the y value, and the y value value becomes the x value. Another way, if we were drawing the graph, was just to reflect the line at y equals x. And so if we had, you know, if we had two points, if I had a point there, and this is my, my equation of y is equal to x, then I would just reflect that, and my new point would go right there. And then if we had, we're given the equation, then we just interchange x and y values and solve for y. All right, so today let's look at um, the inverse of a relation. We were looking at the inverse of a function yesterday. Sorry, it's so noisy. Um, but yeah, today we're looking at the inverse of relations. So remember that some relations are not our functions and some aren't. And so for example, if you had like square root of x, then it's not necessarily gonna be um, a function if you have x squared and vice versa. So consider this graph, x minus three squared plus y squared is equal to nine, whose graph is a circle and the center of this line is at 3 and 0, and the radius is 3. Okay, so if uh, my, the center of my circle is 3 and 0, so at 1, 2, 3, and sorry, I'll move this down a bit. So if I'm at 3 and 0, and my radius is 3, that means that if I were to draw my line, or my circle, then it's going to look something like this. And that's what my 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 uh, my graph is going to look like. So let's see. Describe how to use the graph of the relation to draw the graph of the inverse of the relation. Now remember, this is not a function because it doesn't pass my vertical line test anywhere, or at all. And so it's not a function; it's a relation. Now, how are we going to use the vertical or the uh, the graph of the of the relation to draw the inverse of the relation? Well, the easiest way is to reflect reflect the graph at um, at y is equal to x. And so at y equals x, remember that looks something like like this. And so now my new graph is going to be just reflected across here. So now my point is going to be this line or this coordinate is going to be right here. That's the center. And the radius is going to remain the same. So all my radii are at 3. So that's what my new graph is going to look like. And so we, we just sketched the graphs, we got that done. Now describe how to use the equation of the relation to determine the, the equation, the inverse of the, fun, of the uh, relation. And so this was the equation I was given. And so all we need to do is interchange my x and y values. So interchange x and y values. And so in this case, when I was at x minus 3 squared plus y squared is equal to 9, if I interchange my x and y values, I'm going to be left with y minus 3 squared plus x squared is equal to 9. And then I would just have to rearrange that and solve for y. So determine the, the equation, the inverse of the relation in the form x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r. All right, and so uh, all, all we have to do in this case is using this equation, I just need to rearrange it in this form. All right, so to have x squared, I already have x squared at the beginning. So I'm just going to use this, put it to the beginning. And I'm using plus y minus k squared. And I have plus y minus 3 squared in this case. And we want to equal r squared. And, and so I'm going to equal 9. Now I want to write the equation of the inverse in d. So I want to take this equation and write the inverse of that. 
by solving for y and then verify the sketch in b on a graphing calculator. Okay, so if I have um, my equation y minus y minus 3 squared and if I solve for y, I got to bring this x to the other side. So it's 9 minus x squared. So all I did here was I subtracted x squared on both sides. And now I got to solve for y. So I got to square root both sides. Once I square root, it'll get rid of that squared. And I'll be left with y minus 3 is equal to plus or minus. Remember, I'm, I'm, it's plus or minus because I don't know if, it's, if it is a positive or negative value plus or minus the square root of 9 minus x squared. I'll have to add this 3 to the other side, add both to get the y by itself, and y is going to be equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus x squared. Now, when we're putting something like this into the graphing calculator, it's, uh, it's easiest to do two separate equations. So I'll have 9 9 minus x squared and 3 plus because it's plus or minus the square root of 9 minus x squared. And there is my circle ish, kind of a circle. I might have to zoom in on that. So I'm going to zoom in on the center of my circle there. And it's kind of circly. It doesn't look the best on this on this calculator, that's fine. So using interval notation, state the domain and range of the relation and the domain and range of the inverse of the relation. So let's start with our relation. And remember, our relation was, was this one here. And so my domain, so my values of x, my, my values of x are going to be between 0 and it looks like 6. So the domain is my x such that my elements real numbers, my, my elements of x are equal to or greater than 0 or equal to less than 6 such that x is an element of real numbers. And we're, we're, I use these brackets to show that it is a, a set. And for my y values, y, my values of y are uh, greater than or equal to th negative 3 and greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to 3, such that my elements of y are elements of real numbers. And for the inverse, for my domain and for my range, My, uh, I'm looking for my x and my y's. For my inverse, it had to be negative 3 and positive 3. So my values of x are between negative 3 and positive 3. And my values of y are going to be between 0 and 6. Greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 6. Okay, so let's, uh, let's move on here. Now using function notation to write inverse. Now remember, function notation is when we have f and x, f of x, something like, like this. For an inverse, we would say f the inverse f of x, read as inverse as f inverse of x. So if this is f, this is inverse, and then we would use the notation x as well. So this is how you'd read something read as f of inverse of x. Um, if the inverse of f of x is not a function, then we don't use that notation f inverse of x. Instead, we use this form, x is equal to f of y. All right, so in order to use that notation, we, we would follow these steps. So first, you want to replace f of x by y, and then interchange your x and y to obtain the inverse then solve for y, and after you solve for y, you replace y with f inverse of x. 
So let's let's try this this first one. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna do this one, and then I'll let you guys do this one. So first thing we want to do, replace f of x by y, and set that equal to two x minus three, and then we interchange our x and y's for the inverse. So my inverse is going to be right here. It's going to be x is equal to 2y minus 3. And then I want to solve for y. Right? That's step 3. Solve for y. And so I'm going to bring that through the other side. We'll have x plus 3 is equal to 2y. Then I get to divide by 2. And we're going to be left with y is equal to 1 half x plus 3 or, or y is equal to one half x plus three over two. And then the final step is to replace that, my y value, by f inverse of x. And so this is gonna look like f of inverse of x is equal to one half x plus three over two. Okay, so consider the function f of x is equal to x squared minus 4, and you graph y is equal to f of x on the grid provided, and state the domain and range. Okay, so x squared minus 4. Um, we know that we're going to be at minus 4 for f of x, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to extend something like this. Um, so I graph that, and we want to state the domain and range. Well, the domain for that parabola is x is an element of real numbers. And my range, well, so I have it opening up, so it's going to have a minimum value of negative 4. So y has to be greater than or equal to negative 4, such that y is an element of real numbers. Now I want to determine the inverse. So uh, I would start by replacing my f of x with y is equal to x squared minus 4 and then I need to solve the inverse by interchanging my values of x and y. So x is going to equal y squared minus 4. Bring that for the other side. x plus 4 is equal to y squared. Square root both sides. y is equal to plus or minus the square root of x plus 4. And if I have x plus 4 then that means it's going to be starting here and then opening this way. And that's what my, my graph is going to look like. And then if I want to state the domain and range, well, my domain, now, x has to be greater than or equal to negative 4. If you notice that all my values of x, none of them fall below negative 4. So they're all up here. And my range, in this case, my domain and range of switch, right? Because the graph of the inverse function, the domains become the range, and the range becomes the domain. Y is an element of all real numbers. So is the is the inverse a function? No. The inverse is not a function, does not pass my vertical line test. And if not, how could the domain or range of f be restricted so that the inverse of f is also a function? Well, I would have to restrict the uh, the domain and the range. Well, actually, just the range in this case, right? Um, I would have to. Oh, actually, yeah, I'd have to restrict them both. If I restrict my domain to x has to be greater than or equal to zero, such that it's an element of real numbers, I would have to rest restrict my uh, my domain, or sorry, yeah, my domain as well on this side and so then my inverse would be a function and let's see class example number four all right so don incorrectly determined the inverse of the function defined by y is equal to uh, the square root of x minus three to be the equation of y is equal to x squared plus 3. He graphed the inverse of the function and obtained a parabola. Explain why Don's equation of the inverse is not complete and why the graph of the correct inverse is not a parabola. Alright, so if this is the equation he's starting with, y is equal to x minus 3, and it has the domain, well this one has a domain of x has to be greater than or equal to 3, and 
y has to be greater than or equal to 0. Um, the inverse would be x is equal to square root of y minus 3, and that domain would be x is greater than or equal to 0, and y is greater than or equal to 3. Okay, so sorry, um, I'm back. And uh, yeah, we were, we were talking about, we were uh, at this step here where we found the inverse of y is equal to uh, x minus 3. And so if I were to if I were to graph this, this line, it's going to look something like that. So that's the line of y is equal to square root of x minus 3. Now what we were wondering was explain why Don's equation of the inverse is not complete and why the graph of the correct inverse is not a parabola. And so if I were to take the uh, the graph of, if I were to um, manipulate this, remember I have to square both sides to get to solve for y. That become y minus 3. And then I would be working with y is equal to x squared plus 3. But um, the equation of the inverse, this is the equation of the inverse, which you would think is the parabola, but we're looking for where x is greater than or equal to 0 and such that x is an element of real numbers. And so in that case, the graph we're going to be working with looks like this. And that is the xy minus 3 because it's only working with positive numbers, right? This is a positive this is a positive value. If it was the other way around, then what we would be working with is our inverse going like that. But that's not the case here. All right, and the and final last section is determining f of um, inverse f of x and uh, f of inverse and f of in f inverse of f of x for the class example number 2a where f of x is equal to 2x minus 3. Now what do you notice when we take the the functions of these inverse functions and the inverse function of the function? Now this is going to be pretty confusing and already like it's even confusing to say all the f of f of inverse and f of inverse of x. Um, so 2x minus 3 and the f of the inverse of x was equal to 1 half x plus 3 over 2. All right, so this is, we're looking at class example 2a, and this is class example 5. And so if I'm working with f of the inverse of x, then that's f, and then I have my inverse function here. And that was my inverse function, which was 1 half x plus 3 over 2. And my function was 2x minus 3, 1 half x plus 3 over 2, minus 3. If I simplify this, I'm going to get um, 2 times 1 half x is just going to be x plus 2 times 3 over 2 is going to be plus 3 minus 3 and so those are going to cancel out and we're just left with x. Now let's work with the um, the inverse of or the f the inverse of x f of inverse of f of x. So we have our inverse function and then remember our value for x is going to go inside of f of x will go inside for x so that's going to be 2x minus 3 plus 3 over 2. And 1 half times 2x, again, we're just left with x. And 1 half times 3 is going to be negative 3 over 2 plus 3 over 2. And again, those are going to cancel out, and we're left with x. And so both of these functions, two functions, f and g, are inverses of each other. And both of them are equal to x. So sorry, this video was uh, a little scattered. Um, yeah, good luck.